My role at the Naitahu Māori Rock Art Trust is curator and that's a role I've had since 2003 and it's pretty broad. It covers all aspects of rock art protection and management um, and that's a pretty big brief when you consider there's 740 odd rock art sites in Te Waipounamu. Uh, the majority of those on private land. So that could include looking at things like covenants and legal protection for the sites, or it could include things like we see here, which is a full-blown ecological restoration of the area around a group of rock art sites designed to um, reflect the wider cultural values that these places have. It could also involve archeological excavation, uh, rock art survey and recording, community education. This place in particular is very special to me and a lot of that has to do with the change in the landscape, the ecological restoration which is bringing life back to this valley on all levels but from a human kind of standpoint the relationships that have been developed with the landowner here over a period of 20 years has been pretty rewarding to come from a place where the landowner wasn't that happy about having rock art on his property to a place where he's actively engaged in the management and care of these special places is awesome. The property looked nothing like this when we first started. It was just, you know, a farm and now it's much different. It's great bringing people down to this site. You come down into the valley and it's like stepping back in time. And you come down into the gully and you see all these beautiful limestone outcrops. And the art reveals itself to you as you walk. The further that you go, the more rock art that you'll see. I think people really appreciate the specialness of this place. The art is amazing, but alongside that, it's the feel of the place and the understanding that you're standing in the footprints of the people that created the art. It's a really tangible connection to the rock art, to heritage. The idea is to bring back um, the, the natural values that attracted people to this site in the first instance. But when you start bringing back the ecology of the site, so the plantings are the first step in that, and that with it brings invertebrates and with that comes birds returning to the site, um, with that comes eel returning to the site which is fantastic. It just provides a really good snapshot of life you know back many hundreds of years how the ancestors would have lived at this place. So we bring visitors down to the site, we bring school groups down to the site and it's all about educating people, allowing them an understanding of the importance of these places and how special they are because if they have that and particularly with the school groups where you know our objective is to grow the kaitiaki of these sites into the future you know those kids that we're bringing down here they're you know going to be the landowners of the future people involved in this community so it's really highlighting the heritage value of these places. I'm particularly passionate about rock art because it's such an intriguing topic. It's part of archaeology but not part that's been well examined or investigated and it's such an ephemeral thing too. It's got its own distinct lifetime probably. It's really fragile, it's really vulnerable. There was so much of it, there's less of it now. There's a myriad of threats. For me personally, I really like the human relationships that are very, a huge part of my job. Um, and that's working with local communities, be that schools or landowners or heritage protection agencies or funders, the local runanga, just kind of joining the dots between all of those groups to achieve really good outcomes for the rock art and for heritage.